So let's go on to research. So of course, one of the questions that students are always asking me at this point is, all right, you're telling me constantly that I need to know about my users. I need to know who they are and what their goals are. And it's great. I'm very enthusiastic now. Now what do I do? How do I find out about my users? Well, there actually is an entire world called user experience research where the goal is to find out about our users and get the information that we need to be able to design really, really good products. So when it comes to understanding users, we use primary qualitative research. Now, what you may have heard primarily about in the past, especially when we're thinking about science, is most of that is quantitative research. Now, what does that mean? Well, quantitative research is research that provides or produces quantitative data, hard numbers, where you're doing statistical data analyses. Right, so you are taking a bunch of data, you're sticking it in a program like SPSS, which is for analyzing data, and you go ahead and you run your various tests, depending on what's appropriate for your data. So it'll tell you things like how many and how much, how much of a relationship there is between two variables, for example. And when we look at quantitative data, it can really provide us with some really strong evidence when it comes to looking at science and looking for what science can tell us. Right? It provides strong evidence for general characteristics of human psychology. So a lot of times when you are in most psychology classes and they're talking about research, when you're in biology classes and physics classes and they're talking about research, the majority, the vast majority of the research they're talking about is quantitative. And that's important because you can generalize from it. But there are also disadvantages of quantitative research. And the primary one is that there are some nuances. Quantitative research tends to be very controlled. And there are some nuances in detail that you may actually miss, particularly when you are trying to find out about your users and you're trying to apply it for, to design. You will use quantitative research, but unlike in science, for user experience, you are going to be using qualitative research significantly more. You use both, but you're going to be using qualitative research significantly more. So what's qualitative research? It's detailed knowledge of users for whom you are designing. It is not as rigorous. It's not rigorous science. So it's information about the constraints of a particular problem. Right? It's information about how our users use that product. What are their goals? What are the goals of the individual? What are the goals of the business? What are the goals of the, the uh, organization that you're dealing with? So it tends to be much more descriptive. It's not hard numbers like quantitative. It's more descriptive and detailed. It's going to tell you what, how, and why in very rich detail. It can be very, very valuable, especially for design. But you need to remember, you need to be very careful about generalizing. The majority of the time, with qualitative research, you can't generalize. On rare occasions, you can, but in general, you can't. So in doing qualitative research, finding these details about our users, it helps us identify uh, patterns of behavior for our users and our potential users, because that's what we're, we're really looking for. So what are some examples? Behaviors, attitudes, and aptitudes of potential users. Things like under, getting a better understanding of the domain that the product is going to be used in and how users use that product or that type of product in that domain. So it talks about the various contexts, technical, business, and environmental contexts. Right? It's very hard to really get at that quantitatively. You really need to look at that more qualitatively. 
Also things like vocabulary. What vocabulary is used in this particular domain? If it's the medical domain, they have their own vocabulary. If it's the legal domain, they have their own vocabulary. Even construction has their own vocabulary. As well as what are some of the other social aspects, especially more and more in today's world where our technology is becoming more and more ingrained in our social lives. So we're really looking at how existing products are used, what those user goals are, when these products are used, it provides us with a lot of very rich detail. It is not as controlled as quantitative, and you can take quantitative data, and that will help you. But in user experience, it's qualitative research that you're primarily going to be engaging in. Now, how does this help us design products? Well, in addition to providing us with a lot of information for the design process itself, it also has the word research. And there are a lot of people who like the word research, especially like managers. Oh, you did research? Oh, it must be important. Of course, it is important. So in bringing in qualitative data, it does help provide us with credibility and authority in terms of the design and the decisions that we make about the design. So if you have a design team, it's going to help really boost up the credibility of that design team because you have done research. It also helps unite the team with a common understanding of domain issues and design ideas. Do you remember early in the semester when we talked about some of the advantages and disadvantages of working on these large teams and, and groups? One of them is we often have different ideas of what an accountant is and what an accountant does or what a landscaper does. So this, doing this research helps us unite an understanding of who our users are. And this is really important. It empowers management to make informed decisions about design issues. Because your managers always want to feel like they have enough information to make a decision. It also really helps you influence that decision. This is what we recommend based on the research that we did. Here's the research. It's then easier for your manager to take that information, go to the higher ups and say, this is what we want to do. Please give me your stamp of approval. Now, qualitative research. One of the things that people who are familiar with science will say, well, you know, one of the other reasons we don't, don't do qualitative research is because it's really expensive and it's really time consuming. Well, in the world of science, that actually is true. But in the world of design and user experience, the opposite is true. Qualitative research, because we are not using these stringent requirements of science, tends to be a lot faster and a lot less expensive. You don't have to worry about all the constraints that you need to worry about in scientific research. And frankly, it's more likely to provide answers to a lot of really important design issues. Not all of them, but a lot of them, because what you really need is that rich detail. Now, there are a bazillion types of qualitative research. OK, I'm exaggerating, not a bazillion. There are a lot of different types of qualitative research. If you go out and you Google qualitative research, you Google user experience research, you're going to find a ton of different types of methodologies that you can use. I'm not going to go over all of them, but what, what I am going to do is I'm going to talk to you about the ones that tend to be most popular, most popularly used so that when you go in an industry, you'll have at least some familiarity when people start talking about these things. And then for your group project, you get to engage in some of it. Yay. Aren't you excited? No, not yet? Wait till I show you the group project. OK, don't look scared. It's not that bad. All right, so I'm going to go through some of them very quickly. Stakeholder interviews, subject matter expert interviews, user and customer interviews, user observation and ethnographic field studies. Those can be really fun. A literature review, 
which almost no one likes, but you have to do anyway, and product and prototype and competitive audits. So let's go through each of those. 